Hello, my people. Welcome to Mates TV. My name is Tofu Me. All right, guys. So today I bring to you one video we just come out we ever do. We invite Peter Obi. All right. So in this video, other people were asking Peter Obi some questions concerning the country. So Chuxi has come out to ask Peter Obi. You know, say right now there's this particular um hope where everybody just they feel now now like everything will be better when Peter Obi enter. What's that assurance that when Peter Obi actually gets there, what's so different about Peter Obi? So how is he going to actualize all these things that he's going to do? Is he going to fall our hands the way all those people don't fall our hand? So I'm going to leave you to this video to watch. Comment down below and also give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notification bells to get more videos. Watch. First of all, I appreciate Brasse Wife for the privilege, and I also want to appreciate you, sir, for granting audience to uh, to young people on this platform. Most importantly, um, it would have been three questions, but because of time, let me just keep it to one, um, maybe one point five, if you allow me. Uh, first, just in case I don't no, have a chance. No, no. So I don't, I don't, I don't waste. So I can get the chance next time for Brasse Wife. Okay, let me do two. If I have Brasse Wife's permission, um, first it would have been. Um, Okay, let me say this. Since since 1999, when um, I started witnessing democracy, a little bit younger then, I'm just 34 now, um, I started seeing people come and campaign. It, it comes with a very interesting wind of hope. You know, you just look like the Nigeria is about to change. Vroom, the person will win. We will not be looking for the hope. We will not see it. It just keeps going and going. In fact, there's a, point, there's a particular one that I don't want to be too specific. The country felt like this was it. Everybody was, if you don't vote for that person, you become, everybody was really going that way. It will come again. Vroom. The person will come and sit and we'll be looking for the hope and the success we're all waiting for. So you, I want to ask a quick question. This is that same wind of hope blowing and everyone is believing in it. Two things are, first is, what is what do you what's different about this particular wind of hope what's different what's what's on the package that is different uh that will not look like the other one that sincerely broke my heart without being too specific you know what is different about it that's my first question i don't know if it's okay that you get this one first if i have another chance i will get to the yeah, second yeah, Jara, let me tell you i agree with you but there's a few things i'll tell you people don't change when they get to power. People don't change because they see money. When people get to office or they're in power, they actually bring out their true character. So don't think that anybody got to the office and change. No, no, no. You know a measure of a man when he has power or money. He doesn't have money, can be the most honest man. He doesn't have power, he could be the most humble person. But when you give him small power, if you come back, if you're wondering whether it's this man has been condemning those who are in power that's behaving like this. Yes. I have served the estates. And for the day I served them to yesterday, yesterday, I was coming back in Lagos at the airport. I was coming back with a lady, Aisha Yusuf, and Nanaka. A lady I work with in the bank. Onome, who is the fourth, I fourth, ninth ICAM president, called the two of them aside. I said, you work with this man? They said, yes. Can I ask any of them? said, go and work hard that this man is elected. I was the chief risk officer in Fidelity when we made this man chairman. This was as far back as, I'm talking in 2002, 2003. When we made this man chairman of the bank, I will wrote him a letter saying he's entitled to a Mercedes 500 and a Range Rover. He has to have the letter. And he replied us and said, No. I will wrote him and said, You are the only bank chairman that is not living in the island 
because I live in first time. And every other person lives in Victoria and then or Ikoi. And in the plan also said, if you let us just choose the time of the meeting, if we don't see him there, then we know that whoever is living is affecting him. I come to meet him before, even those who live in Koi and Victoria Island. Everything is by 8, I come there, times will stay till 1 a.m. in the night. I go, you next day I'm there before those who live in Ikoi. In fact, we have somebody who lives on the street of the bank. He has never come there before me. So, office doesn't change people. Now the money change people. They bring out their two cards. That's one. I have served as a governor of Anambra State. Whatever I promised, I said I would do before I entered into office. I did it. I started saying you will have office of first lady illegal i will return school i'll deal with the issue of health i'll deal with the issue of this i deal with the i can tell you all of them were fulfilled even gone beyond my promise i didn't but promise that, that, that i was going to save their money but i cleared as the day that I left off, i handed over i general cleared all the outstanding gratuity and pension of over 45 billion that was accumulated before I came into office. I was not owing a single gratuity. The year I left, I was not owing anybody pension. I was not owing any salary. I was not owing any contractor or supplier who have done their job. And I've said it, if any of them comes out today and say, I was being owed by B2B for some company, I sent CFO at least over 5,000 minimum land allocated by Anambra State Government to people. If you find one land allocated to me directly or indirectly, I'll stop campaigning. I went and bought my own land to build my own house because I was the custodian of the land. That's why the fact that I was number one in MDG, the only measure of development, this is not a man given to me by Nigeria, so they say it was United Nations, if you go and see, comments to be in seriousness, like it's being shown now, for MDG, I was number one. Yet, the day I left office, without anybody putting gun in my head, I had. 150 million dollars, not Naira, in bank, Panambra State. There were 50 50 million in three banks. Fidelity, Access, and Diamond. I have over 30 billion Naira without anybody putting gun in my head. For in the same three banks, about 10 billion for the Fidelity Bank, for and I'm state, and I have an investment equivalent of 25 billion for the state. Nobody asked me. It was things that I did myself. I wasn't under any pressure. I didn't borrow any, I didn't go to any bank. In fact, the chairman of DMO, the DG of DMO while I was governor, Abraham Wanko, in send off party made me the chairman of the send-off party. He said the reason why he invited me and made me the chairman of that party, he announced it there, was because I was the only bank, sorry, the only governor, in his 10 years of being in DMO, that never came to his office to ask that he wants to borrow money. That every other person came. I was the only person. Nobody asked me to. I'm not saying I'm going to change Nigeria overnight. No. The, 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 the problems are enormous. What I'm saying is that... It's even impossible to change Nigeria overnight. Where we are now is very simple. We're on the wrong road. If you don't know where you're going, every road will lead you there. So what we're doing now, we'll get up in the morning, turn right, go right, turn left. What I want to do is to put it on the right road 
to development. While I might not achieve 100% results, Nigerians will see 100% efforts. And I'll communicate it. I'll be able to say like this and be able to tell Nigerians this is what we have achieved. That's what we did in Anambra State. I was talking to the people of Anambra once every month to be able to say this is what we are doing, this is what we are doing, this is what we intend to do. So that they can see where we're going. If people are comfortable, what makes the government is that if people know that we are in the right direction, you drive up hope. And once there's hope, people have faith in the country. We go to church today, believing we will go to heaven. None of us have seen anybody who went to heaven. But we have hope. And that's the hope is not just having our faith to believe in God. But if we come out tomorrow and they say there's no heaven, then there's no place to go. So everybody says, so there is uh, anything you like you do. Because there's no true hope. I want to give Nigerians hope so they can have faith in their country.